Next on Conversations, award-winning artistic director Bartlett Shear. It's much bigger than I ever kind of imagined. Up next, Shear's rise from Seattle's Intamon Theater to becoming one of Broadway's most sought after directors. I can't imagine any of the success I've had would not have come had it not been for Intamon. His thoughts on winning the coveted Tony Award and the pressures of success. Broadway is without question a blood sport. I don't think there's anything more difficult in life that I've experienced than dealing with being successful. Bartlett Shear, next on Conversations. Local production and broadcast of Conversations at KCTS 9 is made possible in part by KCTS 9 members and by a major grant from the Floyd and Dolores Jones Foundation and by viewers like you. Thank you. Bartlett Shear, welcome to Conversations. Thank Good you. to it's have you to here. here. Well, you've had some tremendous success here. Congratulations on the Thank recent you. Tony nomination this Thank year you. for uh, Do Joe Turner's Come and Gone, the success of that show, really successful. Uh, it was written by the late playwright, uh, Seattle-based playwright, August Wilson. The success that you've had in the past few years, do you ever just kind of sit back and think, wow? Uh, yeah, it's actually kind of, it's sort of, uh, it's a little overwhelming at times because it's it's much bigger than I ever kind of imagined. So, uh, actually, I was talking to my wife this morning, and we were both sort of like, "This is crazy," but we're adjusting. We're trying to adjust. It's uh, it's a, it's kind of it only just brings a lot more responsibilities when that kind of thing happens. So, you know, it's fun, but it's it's a lot. So, you know, four Tony nominations. You won in 2008 for uh, artistic director for uh, South Pacific. Uh, but this isn't something that's happened overnight because of the fact is you've been right. in this business for what? Almost 30 years. Yeah, I've been directing for 28 years. So I, I do think, yeah, I, I feel like I've emerged and luckily my success came when I was ready for it. So that kind of had a big impact. It's still very intense to deal with, but uh, it came in an age when I felt like I was prepared and c had the capacity to handle it. Talk about that a little bit more. You said that you're ready for it. I don't, I, I mean, you know, I know there's lots of people about, you know, when you're raising kids and you're worrying about their succeeding or failing or whatever, but I don't think there's anything more difficult in life that I've experienced than dealing with being successful because it brings so many responsibilities and it can really, you have to really be on who you are as a person and the values you have as a person when you're, when you're coping with success and it brings lots more responsibilities and, you know, it's, it's a big part of it. I think I think I do. I was I was probably more unprepared for that than anything else. But luckily, since I wasn't until I was in my 40s that I had such a large amount of success. I had enough experience in life to be able to keep it in perspective, to be able to know where I was in it and measure it properly, and not take it very seriously, really, except for what opportunities it might offer. Your wife is an actress. She is. Does yeah. she help? keeping you grounded? She keeps me plenty grounded. There's no question <laughs> of that. I mean, anybody, that's a nice thing about being in any relationship or any partnership like that is hopefully that person knows you and you don't lose track of yourself in relationship to them. And I have two kids. And so it's a lot of work and you work hard for that. So your life has been very hectic here in the past few years because uh, as artistic director here in Seattle with the Intamon, but uh, everything you've been doing on Broadway right. and work at Lincoln Center, right. Europe, Yep, working, working there yep. as well. How do you, you do all that? I mean, that's just a tremendous amount of travel and balance of life. Yeah, um, it used to be a little easier at first because I would really mostly go back between Intamon and New York in the winter because Intamon runs through the summer and I, I, we could kind of balance that for a while. But then it started to get more difficult when it came to doing an opera in Europe or doing other things. And uh, this past year actually, frankly, has been more settled because I spent the bulk of the year in New York and, and that's where most of the work has been and traveling here. Um, um, you know, it, it actually just gets more difficult in a weird way, but I'm at least in one place all the time. So that's kind of, that's good. Let's talk about this transition that's going on in your mm -hmm. life because it's changed. Mm -hmm. Although you've been working at this and it's been in the planning stages, you will be ending your time as artistic director right. here at the Intamon in uh, December. Yep. 
you already uh, have a uh, person in place that right. uh, Kate uh, were risky. Yep. And I understand you had a pretty big hand in well, that transition. Well, I mean, you know, uh, it, it's an the question really is like, how do you do transitions? Regional theaters often have a process where like the, the, the person announces they're leaving and then they start a search committee and then there's like a long period of time. And I've seen in the past where there, these are very perilous transitions for theaters, meaning audiences get uncertain, they sometimes lose subscribers, things like that. And I was trying to help, working with our board to help avoid that sort of situation. We just had a new managing director, Brian Colborn, come to us. And uh, that was very intense for the organization. So I just thought, well, let's try and find a different way of doing this where I could work with a new person coming in and we could kind of advise the board as we made the transition to a new person. And also, usually people come from the outside and theaters are strangely national and local places. So you want somebody who gets to know the community well as they're beginning to plan so they can keep that balancing act between the ideas they have about the work and the community they're living in. Kate's worked here before, and at the same time, she gets a whole year of transition to learn about Seattle and you know come to understand the place that she's living, move her family here, and really be on her feet before she's in an enormously intense public scrutiny of doing plays. Because doing plays is a very uh, personal relationship to an audience. And when you do them, you're, you're talking about yourself and your community through them. And you have to know your community when you do it. And I think Kate, Kate's a, got a great uh, sense of community, and I think she'll do well at that. Intamon and the decision to leave, was mm -hmm. that a hard decision or one that was really prompted by the success you were having and the, all the travel? Well, I don't really have much choice in terms of my career and my life, because I, I, have, to, I have to be in New York a lot and I'm doing more and more stuff there. It was a very difficult decision for my family because as much as we, when we moved to Seattle from New York, we thought we knew everything and we were cool New Yorkers and it was a big adjustment to Seattle, et cetera. Then we spent nine or 10 years here and now we actually miss Seattle incredibly terribly. And my daughter loves Seattle. It's the center of her life. So we're sort of switched around. And so personally, it's, it's actually quite painful and difficult to leave Seattle. Um, it's a great, great city, and the, our audiences at Intamon are great. The community we lived in was great. I think, you know, people don't realize how lucky they are when they live here. Intamon, what has it meant in your development, in your career? Could you have achieved? Without? Well, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 was, well, I was 40 years old when I came, and I, uh, it was 10 years ago, and I was very, very lucky to come. And, um, it immediately became a home for my work. I was able to do an incredible amount of wonderful pieces, new pieces and classics. Uh, I developed a very good relationship with the audience, and uh, it became a platform both for speaking in the community here and doing stuff nationally. And I can't imagine any of the success I've had would not have come had it not been for Intamon. And I think that's why in giving it, turning it over to Kate, I want the same success for her. And you know, I think that's where Seattle is a very special place, and Two, it's been everything to me. 2006, uh, the Intamon received the Tony for uh, mm -hmm. top regional theater in yep. the country. Yep, it was a very exciting day, and it, it's, uh, it was an award for, you know, 35, 40 years of incredible work in Seattle, and it was a great, it was just a great day for, for everybody in Intamon and for our audience. Well, let's talk about your career. Uh, how did you get started in the theater? Um, I, I really started actually as a writer. I mean, I wanted to be a writer. I wrote plays in college and I did those. And then I kind of didn't have anything really much to say, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so I, so I, I, it's not that I didn't have anything to say, but there's a different, I don't know if I had the full creative impulses as much as I had good interpretive impulses. So I went into directing right after college um, and uh, found that I had good skills at that and I could do more of it. The writing was so exhausting and so lonely and I come from a big family so being a director was sort of better suited. And you know I started very modestly and worked you know at a high schools directing plays and worked you know in communities and uh, built theaters. I did all of that. Went to school, did assisting, had a long tenure, went overseas, you know got a graduate degree overseas. I went through a long process of developing had great mentors and teachers, got to see a lot of great work, so I was very fortunate. What is your strength as a director? Mm, 
I, I think I'm a good interpreter. I think I'm a good storyteller. I think I'm able to, to, to um, blend visual and textual ideas very strongly. And I think I'm able to create experiences which have um, surprises and transcendence of some kind in them. And uh, I think my interpretive skills are extremely good. When I say interpretive, what I mean is everybody gets confused in, cre in creative arts. You know, there are creators and there are interpreters. Creators are composers and writers and uh, lyricists. You know, people make something out of nothing. And then there are the interpreters. There are the conductors and the directors. I'm a good interpreter. You have to give me something, a text of some kind, and I bring it somewhere. And that's what I do really well. I think I have a great sense of design and enough experience that I can take a Shakespeare and do a good job with it or take a Chekhov or take a new play and make something with it. Um, and that's really my strength. And I don't, I have a lot of versatility in that. So I could do operas, musicals, and I don't look at them as all that distinct. Um, some are harder than others, but that's different. Is there one that you like more than the other? No, not really. I would say that it's, what P always surprises people is without question doing plays is the hardest. Because when you're doing an opera or a musical, you have all the support of the music. And so rhythmically, you're not building in the rhythms. And when you're doing a play, it's, it's always the most difficult for me. Where does casting come in? Ca um, casting is, if you take something like South Pacific, we did casting for something like 16 months. It's probably about 80% of the job. It's, it's, it's pulling together the best people for the parts, but also a group of collaborators and an ensemble. And it, it takes enormous patience and, and, um, and uh, willingness to really, really look. And when you take that time, it always pays off down the, down the road. And it's an art form of its own. It's its own very unique art form. And uh, I tend to spend a lot of time at casting. The relationship you have with your actors, mm -hmm. uh, how intense is that? How critical is it to you? And how does that work? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I probably would say, you know, actors are, and any artist, part of the job of the director is to manage complicated personalities. And, Actors go through enormous things when they do stuff. They can be very temperamental. They can be very, it's uh, how anybody does it. Get in front of people and be somebody else. Go through that sort of emotions. Go through all that night after night. Or if it's the case of opera, sing at the top of your lungs in front of 3,000 people. It's incredibly harrowing. So it's my job to make them feel safe, taken care of, give them everything they need to do that well. At the same time, I'm a real collaborator, so I'm not afraid to be in an honest relationship. I'll be straightforward, I'll be loving, I'll be tough, I'll be, you know, all those things go at the same time. But mostly, it's our job as a director to make them feel safe to do something really difficult. And that's what I do. And actors, you, I'm married to an actor, I, you have to love them. And you have to love them for how difficult and how intense what they go through is. And that's how I am, I, I do. I love everything about actors and performers. When you're going to do work, is it all about the story? Is that what matters to you most? Well, they're all different, but um, you, I, I don't know if it's about the story, but you try to get like a little bit of a vibration or a, a sense of what, what the potential in the story is, where its heart is, where it releases into the bigger ideas. Because really the stories are platforms for deeper things that we wrestle with as human beings. And the theater becomes a place to grapple with all kinds of things in life in an, a slightly artificial way that you don't, you can't process every day all these kinds of emotions. You wouldn't survive it. But you can go to the theater and through that experience be led into very complex human emotions and thrilling, overwhelming, joyful experiences. And so you, you, it's this imaginative group exercise where everybody goes into the room and they participate in this crazy alternate fiction and wrestle out problems about being human or experience joys about being human. And so my job is to create the environment in which they can have the biggest experience of that, bigger than their own lives might be. And it sounds a little bit ooky spooky, but it really is a, it's a profound transition that happens. And I get more and more obsessed with the fact because it's such a highly technological word and we have our communicators everywhere and everything, that when you get a group of people in a community sitting in a theater where they have to turn all the communication devices off and be in the dark and watch a single world unfold in front of them, that it's becoming a more and more profound experience for people. 
and a more and more important and central, deeply human experience than ever. And that's, you know, like sitting around a campfire and, and telling stories. And it's big. It can be big. Something like South Pacific was big. It was a big story in 49. And when we had people coming in, grandparents and parents and kids would come to share this American story and this American sound over generations about who we are as Americans, about racism, about military, about all those things, and learn about being Americans and people. And that's what the theater can do very uniquely. Joe Turner was like that, too. Joe Turner, as I mentioned, was a August Wilson uh, written play. And he had, uh, as I understood it, he was, felt strongly about having an African-American be the yeah. director. Yeah. And there was some bit of uh, controversy regarding that. Uh, how did you feel about that when you heard of that bit of underlying tension? Well, I didn't. I didn't I, we expected it, I think. Um, there's a couple things about that. First of all, August was a very powerful artist. And when they originally made all these plays, you know, when it was originally written 20 years ago, uh, it had a wonderful director in Lloyd Richards, who was African American. And August, when he did his plays is in the first creation, powerfully and correctly argued for opportunities for African American directors and a whole community of artists. I think as he got older, that began to change, meaning he started to realize his plays were going to last much longer, uh, be done. And so those feelings, there was a production done of Joe Turner by Irene Lewis in, in Baltimore long before I did it. And she was, you know, not African-American. There's productions done overseas of Ma Rainey by Howard Davies. It was, he was not African-American. These were things that August knew about. At the same time, the issue is still the same issue. We have to have more opportunities for African-American directors in the theater to do not only August Wilson, but Chekhov, Shakespeare, Brecht, everything. And so where I was working at Lincoln Center, we did a big thing by my doing it, but it became an important thing for Lincoln Center to begin to change that and be hiring more, looking to hire more people who are African-American to work there. So it was a struggle, but I think it's going to turn out to be even better for everybody, hopefully, create better circumstances for working. But his wife had actually said yeah. She'd given you support for this whole thing. Yes, and I, you know, I've known Constanza because we know each other here in, in, in Seattle, and we sat on a committee for August Wilson's memorial together, and um, I've known her a long time. And I called her and said, you know, I would like to do this. And I said, the only rule is you have to wait three days to answer me. Don't answer me right away. <laughs> really think about it. Really make sure you feel like it's the right thing. And she did. And I think it was a brave choice for her to do that. But I think it does... It's a good choice. It was, it was a great experience. And this was in the New York Times. This is one of the things that was written. Uh, one job with Bartlett Share can lead to a lifetime of employment. He's famous for creating his own company or family of talent. That integration of work and friendship is at the crux of how he operates. His loyalty and commitment to those he loves is blindingly intense as his loyalty and commitment to his work. Yes, well, we're a family in the theater. So when you have your family in your theater, you, you, I don't like to work with new people very much. I like long conversations with people uh, over time and working with them again and again. I work with a lot of the same designers, a lot of the same actors. So I like them to be a part of, you know, I, my only problem is that I can't work with the same people every single time because when you're working in opera or plays or things, it's, it doesn't always work out, but it means a lot to me. That's how the theater, I think, works best. But this line here, one job with him can lead to a lifetime of employment. Yes, well, <laughs> I, that's very sweet. Um, I hope that's true. I hope that's true. I think that, I, that would be lovely if it was true. What do you like on opening night? Um, honestly, I usually don't watch them. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Do you, I, are you even in the theater? Uh, I might be next door if there's a really good restaurant nearby. <laughs> um, is it just too nerve wracking? It's not what? really that. It's, it's, you know, if you, th if you think about it, you work on something for four weeks in rehearsal, you tech it for two or three weeks and you, you do previews for four weeks and then an opening comes around and you really are exhausted and you've seen it 50 times and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So you go next door and you have a lovely martini and maybe a nice dinner and you hope the show goes really well and you greet everybody afterwards and tell them how great it was. And that's my idea of a perfect opening. Because otherwise it's very, you're usually so relieved to have it over 
that the idea of watching it again with everybody there is always exhausting. So I'm, I'm usually mostly so relieved that it's there and we think it's going to be okay, that that's the best way to go to an opening. I heard in an interview with you that you said that you'd like to make a movie someday, direct a movie. Yeah. Um, Do you have you know, filmmaking background? I don't have. I mean, I've uh, I've I've worked on a couple of um, um, you know, broadcasts of plays I've done, or musicals, or operas, uh, for the Met and for Lincoln Center. Um, you know, I've done a lot of different storytelling versions. You know, I've worked in different storytelling forms: opera, music. Um, opera musicals and theater and I just feels like it would be a, a lovely to give it a shot in that narrative form and see what it's like to do that it's very different you know and so it's mostly for me about, about the challenge of it what how different is it in that in that fo frame of storytelling to tell the story and I think I could have some skills at it and I you know it's I've done what I've done working with cameras up to now has only just in a small way given me a sense of that but I think I have enough sense of the poetry of filmmaking that it would be fun. I'm working with Pedro Almodovar on this musical um, version of Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And being around him, talking about his film, was really thrilling and exciting. And he, of course, asked me about theater, which he knows nothing about. So we have a kind of fun back and forth about that, and that's been fun. What else do you want to do besides the ch opportunity of making a movie in the theater or elsewhere? Um, I mean, I don't really think of myself like, oh, I have se 17 projects that are, I work from project to project. I'm very much a single tasker. So I'm excited about Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown and I'm excited about um, uh, working on Tales of Hoffman and Opera I'm doing c coming up. And I look for new projects carefully, particularly as I'm developing more and more new things. So I don't think of it like I have a series of lists of stuff I want to do. As an interpreter, there's a whole number of Shakespeare's and Chekhov's and things like that that are always on my list. I would like to make a movie, but I honestly try to like go one step at a time and really try to look at each thing as it comes at me. And the, right now, this woman on the verge is the most exciting possible thing because it's a really interesting combination of things, a musical with this movie with a certain spirit to it. And so to see if we can pull that off will be fun. You're going to finish up with the Intimata in December, mm -hmm. but do you ever see yourself coming back and doing other work? Absolutely. There? I mean, I've talked with Kate about that a lot, and we've talked, we've talked about, you know, my coming back to do shows. I actually don't want to lose my relationship to Intimata at all. If anything, I would like to keep it, keep supporting Kate, coming back and directing as often as I can. Um, my Family obviously loves it here, so we would love to come back at any t chance. I think Intamon's my favorite place in the world to work. It's a perfect size theater for doing the kind of work that I've been lucky enough to do. And Seattle community and audiences are so spectacular. So she's asked me if we can work it out to do something in the season next year. There are some musicals and ideas that I can always bring her, and hopefully if there's some opportunity to do them, that's great. So I want to maintain and hold on to that relationship with Seattle because um, it's such a big part of my life. Winning a Tony, what is that? How does that feel? What does that mean? Um, it's always a little bit like the, uh, the Wizard of Oz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, the end of the Wizard of Oz, you know, in order to feel okay, they give you the diploma and then suddenly you feel better. Um, I have always been very averse to award things and I always get very nervous around them and I don't get too, whenever the season of that stuff comes around, I'm always like, uh, but you can't deny the fact that when you're acknowledged and, and celebrated by your peers for work you've done, it does make you feel very strong, strongly about having accomplished something. And so it was a big night when I won last year. It was really exciting and, um, uh, and nerve-wracking because, you know, like anything with success, you feel like you've reached something and then you're just looking over your shoulder for that moment when of course it will all come collapsing down on you, which feels a little less now, but not all the time. The future for you and, you know, being on Broadway, I, I just would think that that would be the most I'm a lucky thing. person in the sense that I, I'm lucky enough to work at Lincoln Center Theater where with Andre Bishop, who's its artistic director, we have a great relationship and we can, 
and great resources, we can do a lot of things. And Broadway is a good place because it's that weird balancing act between highly commercial and yet very visible public work. And it's exciting. And, and coming up with good ideas and, and developing them is a very um, challenging and ex uh, exciting thing. Broadway is without question a blood sport. <laughs> it's very, very high pressured and you can't bring anything onto that frame without it being perfect. And you have to really be ready every time you get out there. And that's, you know, it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's a fun challenge, but you, you, you know, I feel like I wouldn't have been ready for it before I've been doing it. Just getting stuff really in shape and really powerfully prepared at that, at that level is exciting. But it's intense. And also the idea that Broadway can be both commercial and have great works in it. You know, whether they're American plays or something like Women on the Verge or new musicals, it's a fun challenge. So, yeah, it, but only for the mighty. You have to be a bit of a warrior to go out there because they, they come at you hard and it has to be ready. Bartley Share, best of luck in the future on Broadway and come back to Seattle. And thanks for everything you've given through the Intamon here in Seattle. I know the people in this community really appreciate it. Great, thank you. Good to meet you. Thanks. Thanks.